Chris, I wanted to hit you with the motivation argument. So I hear this all over the place, and it's an easy excuse for a team that expects to win. The fan base expects it to win, i.e. a Georgia, uh, that, oh, well, we weren't motivated. We we weren't playing this particular uh, – we, we were expecting a playoff bid or a better bowl. Therefore, we got relegated to this. And uh, it, it, I, I see it as an excuse. I think it's real. I think there's motivation differences in any football game, any athletic competition. There's motivation differences between each individual on the field, if we want to break it down to that degree. Uh, but I don't, it's the only time of the season because the schedules are made so far in advance for the big non conference games. It's the only time during the season that we see like seated teams from all the power five conferences playing each other. So regardless of the motivation or the excuse, I believe it exists, but I don't take it into account. I just say, I'm going to rate and evaluate these conferences based on the competition in these seven to 10 games that they play against each other for each conference and uh, draw some level of con conclusion. I don't know where you stand on that. Well, a couple of things. First of all, if you're, if you're going to do that, you, you look at the PAC 12 and the PAC 12 is only involved in one of those. So that that's pretty telling in and of itself. Whereas you've got you know Big Ten, Big Twelve, SEC, ACC are usually are going to be at least in a couple of those. Um, so that that's one thing I would say. The other thing is is that <laughs> Joe Klatt was right on top of this because both Ohio State and Georgia had players on Twitter that were kind of insinuating during the semifinal games that oh yeah that they should have been there because of the nature of the blowouts, because of all. Well, I think what people need to understand historically is that most of the semifinal games have not been close. For some, And I don't know how to explain that, Mark. I really don't. I would have thought that when you're dealing with the top four teams in the country, the, 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 the gap would narrow, if anything. But if you look at, like, again, when Washington, from my perspective, being at the Peach Bowl in 2016, you look at that 17-point loss, but then you look at Ohio State getting completely shut out and blown out by Clemson um, in the Fiesta Bowl that year. I think what was it like thirty nothing, thirty three nothing, something like that. Yeah, it 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 really is weird how there's so much discrepancy in those final four games, and I don't know why it is. But when you see Ohio State and Georgia, and you see their players starting to pop off a little bit, and then you see Georgia lay an absolute egg like they did against Texas. I, 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 you, I agree 100% with you. It's, an abs it's absolutely an excuse. It's, um, you know, it, there, there's no reason for it. And I think, and that's why I applaud a team like Ohio State even more and a guy like Urban Meyer and his coaching ability and his ability to keep the kids focused. Because at the end of the day, we're still talking about kids for the most part. Like, not to go too far afield again, but this kid, Sama Pahama, this kid who's like 6'4", 330, whatever, and he's kicking off, and he's doing damage on both sides of the ball. He literally just turned 17. He played his entire senior year as a 16-year-old. So, I mean, these, as far as I'm concerned, they're still kids. And kids, their heads can be turned all over the place. And then you add the social networking component. Most of those guys can't get – they don't have the discipline to stay off of it. That's why a guy like Jake Browning, when he leaves Twitter at the beginning of the season and comes back after – I, I give them all the credit in the world for that because there's a lot of kids out there that could never handle that. They have to be on their phone 24-7, be a part of that. And so, you know, when Joel Klatt's sitting there and he's looking at all these guys, he's going, guys, I, I don't know if you should be piping up because you had your opportunity and you laid an egg at LSU. So I don't know what you're talking about, Georgia. You had a chance. You should you you had a chance to determine your own fate and you blew it. And and so I so in that sense, yeah, I mean, I think it's an excuse. I agree with you 100. percent And um, you know, when it comes down to it, the way the playoff is set up, it's set up to do exactly like you're you're talking about. Literally, just uh, put the best teams in there. I mean, you know, again, you, and I don't know if you want to get into the best versus most <laughs> deserving and all that. We don't need to get into that. But but ultimately, you know, wh whoever the the college football playoff committee decides is the four teams that that are the most deserving slash best slash whatever to 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 supplement their argument that's what you go with and then after that that's why you play the games i mean you, you kick off you you let them go and 
And that's why I think when you see Alabama and Clemson playing in the championship game year after year after year, it really does show that I don't think it really matters what the playoff scenario is, whether you go four teams, eight teams, 16 teams, what have you, the cream always rises to the top. And, it, and, it, and invariably, that's why those teams are playing right now because they are the two best. And I think that's why this year was maybe so hard to determine in a lot of ways was because there was no real legitimate third and fourth team. It was Alabama, Clemson, and then it was just like a whole bunch of mess after that. And, and Ohio State and, um, and Georgia could have very easily been in the playoff scenario, just like Oklahoma and Notre Dame could have very easily been in the playoff scenario and were. But it's hard to, you know, I think create a type of environment and a, and a type of playoff structure that's going to automatically give you these amazing games when the top two teams are so far and above better than everybody else. It's just, it's just a fact of life in college football right now, and it's the dynamic that we have to deal with. And, and, and right now, I'm not sure what solves that problem. I, I really don't, other than you got to go out there and you got to recruit better guys. you got to take guys away from Clemson. you got to take guys away from Alabama in order to, to level the playing field a little bit. I think Ohio State might be the intriguing third option there because I think you can argue either side. So this is a team that during the playoff era won a national championship, beat Alabama. It, it's one that uh, in your best versus earned or deserved category in 2015 was left out even though they had an NFL team and most people considered it the best team in the country, but they lost on the last play of the game to Michigan State. Uh, and then they annihilated Michigan and Notre Dame and they sent like half the team to the NFL. They were just a loaded, great team, but there you go. Almost everyone said, this is maybe the best team in the country. They're definitely one of the top four, but they didn't earn it. Michigan State earned it. They go and they get annihilated. Um, Ohio State has that one Clemson game on its resume, so maybe that's what's pulled them back from, from the other two, but that was two years ago, and since They've played themselves into the selection process, but they were left out the last two years, so we'll never know if they could have competed with the other two. Um, yeah, I think it's fascinating because I'm going to contradict myself. I may very much, you need to earn it. and But I'm watching these games, and and after I cut a zillion videos breaking this down in a number of different ways, people just flat out kept asking me, we just want to know, who do you think are the four best? Well, I thought the four best were going into the bowl season, Alabama in order, Alabama, Georgia, Clemson, Ohio State. Um, but I didn't think, and, and that Ohio State, Oklahoma narrative was difficult to separate. And I understand the committee going with well, your your floor is awful, Ohio State. You got blown out by Purdue. We can't have that. So I understand the tiebreaker, but basically they had similar resume, very similar resumes, and Ohio State had better wins. So I just I hate the system. I think it's five conferences and four spots that the math didn't work out from day one. So why did we go with it? Uh, but um, I, I do understand after watching all these semifinal blowouts why people are reverting to well, we can't expand this. We're going to have more of this. A blowout uh, situation, yeah, but, you're, but you're already having that. So I don't, I don't. To me, that's not a re, that that's not an argument to to ex, that's not an argument to limit expansion. Um, here's the thing, Mark. That I think there's two things that I think really work against this whole thing. Like you said, the math was never going to work out when you have five power conferences and four teams. That, I mean. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know why someone thought that was a that was a good idea, but secondly, the whole idea of, of Notre Dame being this massive outlier, like if they win eleven games every year, it feels like they're automatically in. Why? Get in a conference. I to be honest, I, I really truly believe that Notre Dame should be penalized until they join a conference. They just because they get their own network, just because they have Subway alumni, they shouldn't be treated as this this sacred cow out here in the middle of nowhere that gets to have its own set of rules. It just doesn't, it's never flown with me and I'll never understand it. 